We're going to see now how to modify our data frames, either adding rows, columns, or removing these rows or these columns. First, again, it's important to, of course, understand what operation you want to perform. You want to add, modify, remove, and more importantly, what are you going to be adding or removing? Is it a new row or is it a new column? Is it a new row? It's basically a new sample or it's a new column altogether. You want to add or remove, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is adding new rows. Um, this first method is going to use the append method of the data frame. Um, I want you to take a look, a close look at what we are adding. We're going to create first a series. So forget about data frames for a second. You're creating a series and you're adding that series. You're giving it a name. In this case, the name is Brazil. I'm going to append that series to my data frame. And the first thing also important to notice is that append is an immutable method. So that's why I have to pretty much overwrite my previous data frame with this new one. And now Brazil was added to the data frame, right? With the index being whatever was the name before. So that's an important part. The append method or in general, when you add things to a series, to a data frame, the name will be placed again in the index position. So append has again this concept of adding at the end. It's a sequential method. The other method we can use is just use lock. And now we can specify this, the index, and we don't need to add the name in the series. In this case, we just say in the position China, I want to add this thing. China doesn't exist here, so you can just go ahead and add it. That's it. There is no nothing else to, to do there. What about a column? Adding a column is simple. We just need to use the regular column syntax. So in this case, we do df add column. We don't use lock, just the column and you pass all the values that will be placed in the new column. So we're adding the currency. It's going to be sitting here on the right. And actually it's going to be sitting. It, it, there is, it's important, the order of the column. There you go. Um, again, we pass a value for each one of the countries that we have in the original data frame. What about modifying data frames? Um, let's add a new column altogether. And this looks a little bit more as a regular um, data, as a regular vectorized operation. In this case, when I added this column, I pass a value for each one of the indices that I have. But if the column has a common term, I can just say set language to English. That's it. And everything is going to be set to English. Okay. Again, it's like a vectorized spread out operation. Let's what about changing things we have here that Japan's population is 1.2 we have scientific notation, but it can change that with uh, Japan here is 1.3. I can change that with the um, selection. So I just do of the row Japan basically have this whole thing. I want to select only population, only population. So this thing, and I want to alter it and I want to add it this given number. Um, let's change from Canada to Germany, Canada, France, Germany. I want to change HDI to be 0 0.9. So I'm pretty much rounding it. When I say it, I'm going to see 0 0.9 for each one of them. Transposing a data frame, something simple we've seen, just in case you, we actually did it for series, but it's also working with uh, with uh, the whole data frame, not just with the series transforming to a data frame. And now let's see how we can drop things from a data frame. So dropping things is pretty much the opposite operation of selecting things. So I can say, I want to select, for example, um, all these countries, or I want to drop all other ones, right? So it's basically dropping is the opposite sel uh, of selection. By default, dropping will work without modifying the original series. So I did df.drop and I dropped Brazil, but the original one still has Brazil in it. So to make the drop operation permanent, you need, as usual, to pass the in place parameter. So basically you say, I want to drop Brazil and I want to do it. I want to write it down. I want to commit it, if you want, to the data frame. So important thing from drop is we are passing here the 
index. So drop works by index. By default, drop will be dropping elements or rows in the index of the data frame. So let's do that. Let's um, try again dropping Canada and Japan. Multiple. You can pass basically what we're saying here is you can pass multiple values to the drop operation. Something important. Remember, it's immutable. We. It seems like we have removed Canada and Japan. Once we look again at the um, data frame altogether, uh, both Canada and Japan are still there. Removing columns with drop is simple. What we have to do is just df.drop columns something, right? So it's not only the default, I mean, it's not um, the default way that was just passing the list here. You must explicitly say, columns equal something and in this case we have just dropped the column language all together the drop method actually if we check in detail how do how it works it has a name for both columns and also for the index that we were dropping uh, before so by default again it's going to be by index that is actually uh, the first one, the first uh, parameter, it's labels here, but basically again represents the index. There is also another way that is you can drop something and you can specify what axis it is. Is it, ver is it a horizontal axis or is it column axis? In this case, horizontal axis is basically index zero which is the default behavior. This is the default behavior we've seen. I remove this thing, it's gonna work in the same way. But what we can do is if you don't wanna specify columns equal something, you can do, actually, usually this is gonna be the, the, the recommended form. It's a lot more readable, but something you might see around is people saying, I wanna delete currency, but currency is on the first axis. So it's axis one right here. Um, axis one is equals again to the column one. So these will basically be dropping currency. So if you see something here, again, usually in our way of working, we're gonna specify in that place the labels of the index. But again, if you see an axis here, we are actually changing something else. In this case, it's a column. So it's important for you to check it. Finally, there's a third way. It's not the columns parameter or the labels parameter. It's not axis zero or one. It's also axis equals columns or axis equals rows. And it's uh, it's a third form. To be honest, it's also very, very readable. From all these, I would say axis equals one and axis equals zero are the not recommended ones because it's not intuitive. What does axis one mean? I don't remember. Axis equals columns is a lot more readable. And of course, just saying at the beginning, I want to drop columns language. I think it's the preferred way from now on. Um, finally, creating columns out of columns. This is a very common operation and it's very intuitive. We're just pausing and giving you this hint because it's something we're going to be using and doing um, often. Basically, given a couple of columns from a data frame, you can create a new one. If you select this individually, remember that what you get is a series. We saw in our vectorized operations of series that we can actually combine series. They are aligned in, uh, in terms of their index. So let me show you now population separately. They are aligned in terms of their index. Canada, Canada, here, France, France, they are aligned. So you can create these operations, just the operation we saw on series. The result of this whole thing can be added to a new column. So now we have a GDP per capita. This is something very common, right? So it's something that in Excel, for example, you're gonna create a new column. You can do GDP, GDP uh, per, per capita. And basically you're here, you're gonna set a formula that is um, the GDP divided by the population, right? And you're pretty much extending this whole thing. The same thing is what we're doing right here with the new operation. We're defining GDP per, per capita to be equals to GDP divided by population. The new column is created right there. Please uh, keep in mind that in this case, uh, for example, China does not have a population. So we are just, uh, the, the value is gonna be no. Finally, checking the existing of a given, um, key or in this case we use the term key generically because it's going to be either a column or a row 
by default, you're gonna check if something is, uh, a, if, if the column is part of the data frame. So in this case, if we have a population or row, and if you wanna check row existence, you have to use the index. So is Canada contained in this index? Is, is Brazil without a Z, Brazil? Uh, we actually remove Brazil, so it's gonna be the same. They will both be gone. Um, if it's part of the index of that data frame, basically, if the element exists in the data frame.